Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. So this is another great episode of Crave My Nails. And on today's video, I'm going to be just showing you guys how I did this cute white set for the summer. I already have my client tipped up and ready to go. I just applied the primer and we're going to start applying the acrylic. So of course, I use Bounty Paper Towels. They're the quicker picker upper. And I use that when I do nails. I feel like that's the best paper towel for me when it comes to applying the acrylic and wiping the acrylic off. They get the job done. So first things first, let's get started. So on this set here, we're gonna do ombre white tips on all of it right now guys i'm super excited like i just got my new tablet so we're trying this out i never really do voiceovers but i just got all this new stuff so i can get back to doing youtube videos for you guys so i'm super excited so now that i'm back making youtube videos for you guys if there's anything you want to see, I would love for you guys to, you know, comment and let me know. I'm going to do some videos where I just like show you guys how to do a, like one design at a time with just like one finger. So I have a whole bunch of ideas in my head. But right now I'm just going to t give you guys, I guess, just some tips and tricks while we watch the application process right now i use mainly mia secrets for my acrylics and mia secret is also the monomer i use i like their system and honestly since i have been using mia secrets my clients they have good retention with their nails like most of my clients i see them on a monthly basis every six weeks some people even come back with their nails on for two months so I highly recommend Mia Secrets if you are a beginner nail tech because it is affordable. It the application is very nice. They have great cover nudes like what I'm using right now. The cover pink is one of my favorites to use because it ombres beautifully and I also am using um the frosted pink on the tip. I personally don't know why it's called frosted pink if it's clearly like the soft white so but that's besides the point i'm using the frosted pink on the tips and the cover pink on the top half to create a beautiful ombre effect and now we're just going to do it on the other side oh we're not doing it on the other side <laughs> So right now in the video, as you can see, I'm applying, uh, also applying a layer of clear acrylic. Now this is how I do nails. I did go to um, a nail school. I actually went to nail school twice, but I'll tell you guys that story a little later. But this is how I do nails. And I like to do like kind of a encapsulated method encapsulated method on all of my nails so i encapsulate everything with clear acrylic and if i remember correctly when i was in nail school they did tell me that the clear acrylic is like stronger than the color acrylics and stuff so make sure when you're doing nails that you're putting the clear acrylic on the top and when you go to file it doesn't take away the design that you did underneath if you are doing a design or like even when you do just like a solid color and you still put the clear acrylic over it, that helps for when you file. So if you do it too thin, like some people do it thin, and then you file too much away, then you file some of the color off. So the clear acrylic also lets you have space to file. If anyone is wondering, I am using a size 14 brush. Now, some nail techs don't use a size 14. Like when you go to nail school, they usually start you off with like a size 8 brush and they teach you how to do like the three bead method. But as you guys can see, I'm not really doing a three bead method. I'm doing the one bead method. 
the one bead method will make you like if you're really trying to be a nail tech and you're really trying to get to the money, you're really trying to get to the bag, you need to learn the one bead method because um when you become busy, like I've been doing nails for five years now and I have a a, a healthy clientele base. So when you get busy, like you don't, you really don't want to be sitting around doing someone's nails for four hours. Like time management is important and clients love when they can get in and out. So using a bigger brush will help you achieve that. When I first started going to like getting into nails and doing nails, I was going to a black nail tech myself and she told me that. If I'm going to start learning how to do nails, pick up a size 14 brush and start using the 14 brush right away. Like I started out with a size 14 brush and for me, that really helped my speed. Like when I did work in a salon for a short period of time, a lot of the girls was hating. They was hating because I was like the fastest nail tech right up there with the VMNES. Like... I was getting my girls in and out and you know that's why we're doing nails like you're doing nails not only for the creativity but like if you're a professional you're trying to do this as your career you know you want to be able to get your clients in and out so you can make as much money as you can okay everyone so right now we are about to skip a little bit like we skipped a little bit to the end of the application process so then we can just get to the filing it's time to file so whenever i file okay as you guys can see right now this is important like that little part i did just now where i hit the nails when your nails are dry and you hit them they make the click clack sound so make sure you check that the nails are dry before you start filing because that really you, you don't want to file the nail while it's wet you want to file it when it's hard so you can get a good shape also i use a fresh nail file every time with each client some nail techs like when i worked in the salon i literally almost had a heart attack because some of the girls was not using fresh files on every client and to me, that was just crazy because these files, in my opinion, they're not under the, like the reusables, but especially like outside of sanitation. But when you use a nail file and you're using it like the sand, like it's a sand, it's a sandpaper, like a fresh one is going to give you a crisp look. And I use two nail files per client and I use one fresh one on one hand and one fresh one on the other hand and I use 80 80 nail files the 80 80 nail files are the extra coarse nail files and I use these because they give me the crisp shape like if you want to know the very exact particular ones I use I actually use the D and D 80 80 nail files to me, those are the best ones I've found on the market and my local nail supply store sells them. But just go to your local nail supply store and test out some of the nail files. Like I, I know some people order theirs online, but stuff like everyday products like monomer, nail files, acetone. I like to go to the nail supply store, like the physical nail supply store and pick up those items especially since I'm doing nails full time, I run out of those items. So it's not really something where I want to sit around and wait for it to ship in. But right now I'm going around the cuticles in this part of the video and I'm using a volcano drill bit to go around my cuticles. I do use two drill bits to clean around the cuticle when I do nails. This is how I do them. This is how I do them. Disclaimer, this is how I do nails. So when I was actually working at the salon, 
one of the girls put me on to the volcano drill bit. And I'm so happy that she did that for me because once I started, see, look at that cuticle right there. Look at it. It's, it's, it's clean. It's nice. It's presentable. It ain't no Russian, no Russian manicure or whatever, but you know, it gets the job done. It's nice. It's presentable. It's clean. It's not up on her skin, which is a major key when you're doing nails. Clean cuticles. You do not want the acrylic. You do not want any nail polish flooding your cuticles. It makes your work look messy. So right now, I switched out my drill bit. And this one is actually a fine drill bit. And I use that one to clean around the cuticles as well and to go underneath the tip of the nail, as you guys just saw. And now we are buffing them out because, baby, guess what? It's time to wash your hands because it's time to get into the set. It's time to get into the design, everybody. We finally made it to the design part. If you are still watching, please like this video, thumbs it up up share comment subscribe do the whole good do me good please like i'm really trying this is my first video back and i'm super excited and when i was doing videos before people was like oh can you explain blah 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 so that's why i'm doing voiceovers now because i got an ipad and i'm just going to be giving you guys great content but right now i'm applying top coat now, I know other nail techs, they apply their matte top coat, but I like to apply my regular, just regular schmegula clear top coat to my nails before I do designs. Like this will help your line work come out really smooth because this set we're about to do, we're going to do um like the half French. It's like the French without the French. Y'all will see. I don't know all the terminology for all the new trends, but just know these nails came out real cute. They was real cute. They was real tea. They was giving what it needed to give. So in order to get to where we needed to give, put the top coat on first. So now we are about to draw on, well, I am, unless you're doing it with me, <laughs> but I'm about to draw on the half smile French I was telling you guys about. Yeah, this thing. We're going to be drawing this on every nail. And as you can see, it's going on smoothly. Like if like some people like, oh, I made a mistake and I'm showing you how to fix it. That's just a little French. This is actually like. A brush you would use the French and the clean around the cuticles and shit. Like in nail school, they make you use that brush. And that cleaned it up. But see, if we didn't put the top coat, depending on if you buffed your nail good enough, you can still draw this line with it being this smooth. But if you didn't buff your nail good enough, the gel will start to seep slightly into the cracks where it was not properly buffed, which is why we added the top coat. That was a great explanation. Okay, so we are just going to do this. I did this on eight out of the 10 nails so we're gonna do this on all of eight nails and that will be the design for that fingers well those fingers very nice very very nice and then we are going to actually add some charms and diamonds to the finger that did not receive the smile line oh see Everybody makes mistakes, y'all, so it's okay if you make a mistake and you're a beginner. It doesn't have to be perfect. The great part about gel is gel wipes off. Just whenever I make a mistake or, like, if I just need to wipe off the whole finger, I just take a paper towel, I spray it with some alcohol, and I just wipe it away. All worries, gone. But in just a few seconds, we are about to start bedazzling and adding our charms, which is 
one of my favorite parts. It really makes this set pop. And that's what really made this set pop because it was so natural, simple. It really is just an ombre and we're just making it fun. Look how nice her nails look already though. It already is shiny. Ooh, 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 ooh. We're about to get started. So, I don't know if I'm ready to tell you guys my secret on what I'm using to put my diamonds on. For most of my clients, their diamonds stay on with my little secret. And yeah, they don't complain. My diamonds stay on because I'm using boom, boom, boom. It don't move. Gorilla Glue. The 10 second Gorilla Glue is what I'm using to glue my diamonds and charms on because for me, that has been the best result. And once you just use just a little bit of the Gorilla Glue, you don't have to like put too, too much. You glue your diamonds on, you let the Gorilla Glue dry and you top coat, they're going to stay. And also when I use large, like I'm using larger charms like you guys see now. I do use the um, rhinestone glue, kind of like the builder gel, the same thing that um, people use to make the little ripple 3D designs. I do use that to seal it in as an added like, hey, these aren't going nowhere. But you guys are going to see me do that in just a few steps. Steps. I'm ahead of myself. Ba -boom. And let the music play. Okay, everyone, so we are finally at the last part that I was just explaining a few moments ago when we add the Builder Gel top coat to seal in the diamonds and we're top coating everything and getting our clients out of the door. This is my favorite part because, of course, you get to see all your hard work, your clients are happy, they feel like baddies, and we're just out here making baddies for the world. If you're still watching, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you enjoyed the video, please let me know in the comments. You know, actually, we're going to comment my favorite angel number. If you're still watching, just to let me know if you guys are still watching. If you're a part of the new, the Craver gang, like, are you here with me? Comment 777 underneath this video right now. Pause the video, comment, keep it going. And now we're doing, oh, I'm, I'm missing a part. I'm missing a part. So right here, I do this at the end of every set to make sure my nails are crisp. So sometimes when you're working with gel polish, if you apply a little bit too much, it runs off. So you guys are going to see me crisp up the nails right now. And I like to do this at the end of every set just to make my shape perfect. But we are coming to the end of the video. Like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, and I'll be back very soon with another video.